Greetings and hallucinations to all you folks out there. I actually have two casts for you today. One of them is a technical failure and one of them is an epic failure. And we're going to start out with the strategic facepalm. And I got to say, this is probably the single biggest facepalming game that I have ever seen. Um, it... I, I'm just gonna dive right right into this game because there is no way that I can express to you the amount of stupidity that happens here without actually showing you. So, sit down, get ready for hilarity, and let's all enjoy the uh, ridiculousness <laughs> that comes out of this map. All right. To introduce the teams, before anything goes further along, we have Spidey CW taking Aeon. This is Seraphigen. Seraph. I'm just going to call him Seraphin, take, Seraphin taking Seraphim, even though that's probably not correct. M83 taking UEF, and Psychic on Cybern in the rear. On the left side team, we have Iconics going Cybern, Front Color going Color, Front Color going Seraphim. Then we've got an Aeon for Mortal 3000, and another Aeon for McNeil. So... Let's dive into the action here without any further introduction and see where it takes us. We've got a Tech 1 bomber headed across the map here, and this map is actually a bit difficult because it does have this uh, penetrating fog that is over the top of everything. I have the strategic icons always on, toggled, so you can see the icons through the mist, but the view of the game itself is not that great when this happens. Bomber gonna come across here and start dropping on engineers, gonna kill power production for Iconics, which is always a tremendous annoyance, and gonna loop back around for some more engineer kills. One problem that I notice right off the bat is the amount of ACUs that are in the center. Um, this map has an inordinate amount of mass in the center here. I mean, We've discussed this before, how absolutely ludicrous the amount of mass is on this map. There are thousands upon thousands of tasty, tasty mass bits in the center. Everything from Loyalists to Titans to Tech 3 Transport to whatever else you want. So, typically, two ACUs come to front. Red should be headed to front. He is now, but it is very late to be grabbing mass. And Spidey is going to throw up a point defense, which is immediately going to get taken out by artillery. But this is very dangerous because he is right next to two, about to be three commanders. We actually have three commanders going to front for the left side team versus poor little Spidey Whitey over here. And I get the distinct feeling that this is not going to end well for him. Right now, everyone is happily sucking up mass, so it's not really a danger as of yet. But if he stays out there for too much longer, he could find himself in a world of hurt. And this bomber is still going, by the way. It got up to eight kills there before finally getting tagged by an interceptor. That bomber was in the air for almost a minute and a half cleaning up Engineer. Spidey taking artillery fire, running in far too straight of a line. Ah, there, he dodged over to the side just a little bit, but still taking Artie to the face. Getting double teamed by Front Color and Iconics, and Torp Launcher going down. And he is not... Oh, the artillery! The area of effect on the artillery killed his ACU after the head was completely underwater. I'm going to have that in fast action replay from the side right over to the edge of the screen because that was pretty freaking incredible. So that is one down. Front player is toasty fried for the right hand team. There is another very exposed ACU, but he is right next to the water trying to snag some mass. And yeah, that is slightly problematic. Nice little engineer drop over here. That is going to suck up these humongo gargantuan rocks. And holy cow, that's a lot of Tech 1 bombers. We have uh, seven air factories. <clears throat> All of them making Tech 1 bombers. From Psychic, who is pulling 19 mass and producing 580 power, 600 if you count overflow, and converting 100% of his resources into Tech 1 bombers. And that is, it's usually a bad idea to convert 100% of your resources into any one type of thing, 
but uh, maybe by sheer force of number he can actually do something with those bombers. M83 is going to have to dive into the water here thanks to these two ACUs. Front color is going to loop back around into his base it looks like and we're all going to get a little hazed. Psychic is now up to 30 bombers. I may have to keep a running list of how much damage that is uh, on first strike potential because we're now at to 34. That is ridiculous. Still making bombers. And no one has scouted for the left side team. They have air. They have plenty of air, but no scouting. And Pink, Seraphin, he is also making crazy amounts of air. So not only do these guys have bombers, but they also have air cover. So this is going to get very, very uh, hairy for the left side team very quickly. 44 bombers and the counter is still ticking. 46, yeah, no, 48, 50. That is gonna keep going up, 51. You can never have too many bombers. Now let's play the decisions game. Who is going to die to this? I'm thinking Iconics. Yes. Bombers winging over in that direction and there's the stupid console and I don't know why. So many bombers. And there is no way to dodge all of those effectively. Iconics losing about half his health in the first pass. Bombers coming back around, a handful of interceptors that were in the area were killed off by pink, and there's the fiery thermonuclear detonation that confirms that yes, another person has rammed the heel of his hand through his forehead in a strategic facepalm, and there is still Tech 1 bombers streaming across the map full blast 26. 26 <laughs> after some got killed. <laughs> they keep killing them, but it goes down to 25 and then goes up again. He's making Tech 1 bombers so quickly <laughs> that even with air cover, the left hand team cannot kill off all of the bombers. And something needs to be done with them before they all get wiped out by this artillery down here. Mobile anti air getting made by the truckload in order to try and deal with this massacre that's raining down from the heavens. Got Tech 1 stationary anti-air going down as well. Oh, there we go. Mobile flak. That is exactly what you want. There's one in the base, so no bombers getting over that way. And all of those are finally going to get shot down. Even though they're still streaming across, still causing damage, but not as much as they were. And I think that is the end of the bomber apocalypse. Still a couple coming in, and that is a torp bomber. Are we going to see another snipe? This would be very frustrating. ACU going to run over here and try to snag these rocks out from under the engineers that are over there. And console again. I know what it is, guys! I know what's bringing the console up. I got a new mouse finally because my old one broke and I just remembered that I never set up the hotkeys on it. So probably one of the keys is connected to the button that is bringing up the console. I'll just have to be very careful and not press that button on the side. Okay. So things have finally calmed down. I'm going to go ahead and bump up to plus two just because I can and we will wait on the next event to occur. So two pretty ridiculous deaths and we're now down to a three versus three on mesmerizing paradise and tech one bobbers looks like they are headed south in order to kill off some of this um oh my goodness i almost called it an arpeggio holy cow my brain is confused uh yes it is going down to the keys to play an arpeggio. Um, <laughs> uh, my, my, my brain confuses even me sometimes. 
You got two ACUs still hiding in the water and some Riptides beginning to come out. Although the Riptides are traveling across the neck. Not sure why you would build amphibious tanks when you could build regular tanks if you're going to send them across the landmass anyway. But to each his own. I suppose that whatever makes you happy is what you're going to do. Those bombers still cruising around in the bottom and killing all the mass extractors casually as they pass by because, you know, there's no air cover at all, so why not? Massing interceptors now, and there is a Tech 2 air factory. You got a transport there. Psychic is going to jump into that transport. What? is he doing ah there are tort bombers attacking so this is going to be an attempted snipe we've got three tort bombers and still the air cover has not moved there it goes there are some swift winds in there so feasibly they could save that psychic could die or he could drop in and yes he has the torpedo upgrade which is immediately going to start hammering away at front colors ACU with its incredible amount of damage looks like psychic is also throwing some tort bombers into the mix I think yellow's gonna die it is a race against time he's got to get out of the water ASAP because if he stays with even a toe in the in the uh, ocean he is going to get obliterated sonar going down front color is to 1000 health Tort Bomber's coming in for another pass, and he is history. Front color's out. That is going to be yellow eliminated, and now it is two versus three. But here comes a Solus lazily hooking around the outside of the map. I would imagine he is probably going to go after Psychic with that. Psychic, no, yeah, there's his Tech 2 transport. I'm going to laugh hysterically if he climbs into the Tech 2 transport and gets sniped. Solus looping back around. One good thing about the Solus is that it does it drops its torpedoes way far away from the target. And therefore, uh, if you're in a small bay, you can actually avoid a lot of fire. And is this really happening? Really? We're going to have an ACU killed by Tech 1... <laughs> I can't even believe I just saw that. The Aeon Frigate. The worst <laughs> frigate. <laughs> that misses constantly. Just the, a group of frigates just managed to kill an ACU. That is great. That is one of the best things I've ever seen. Alright, so we're back to a two versus two and uh, just dropping like flies one after the other. Thankfully, they are on opposite teams as they're uh, falling to whatever is killing them. But So it's staying a pretty even... Oh, I almost missed that. Seraphim has dropped a TAC commander on the left-hand side, and I would honestly say that that is painfully, painfully close to the base of McNeil. Now I know he's probably want ooh dangerous. We got riptides on this ACU. Um Seraphin is probably wanting to tack everything in this base if he can. He's throwing up a shield, going to keep launching tacks. But I don't know that I would land that close, especially seeing as he's having to project his air a long ways. This air player has Tech 3 air, so he can build Mercies, he can build Strat Bombers, whatever he wants. And that is not a healthy thing to be close to. Especially when your transport has gotten killed. And yes, there is the Strat Bomber incoming. And Power Stall at the worst possible time. Handful of Riptides moving in on Mortal and I guess we're about to find out if Mortal is immortal or if he is immortal because tanks are a coming and they are a coming rapidly. 
Strat Bomber beating up Seraphin's commander. There's two strats now, and that power stalling shield is no help at all. Well, it is actually helping. That is the best timed recharge of a shield ever. ACU getting tangled up in these riptides. He's history. There's no way he's getting out of that. So we're going to have basically simultaneous nukes. One there. And, oh, oh, nice dodge. Very nice dodge. But that one's got you. All right, so <laughs> one on each side again. And now it is red versus blue. Right down to the ladder colors, a one versus one to determine the winner of the game. And we have air with all of these gunships versus land with all of these riptides. And right about now, I bet you that MA-83 is desperately regretting the fact that he did not mix any mobile flak into his army. He's kind of going to chill out on this side. He's inside two shields, not immediately in danger, but there are a lot of gunships and a lot... Oh, no gunships yes they're right there and some strap bombers so shields going down due to power stall trying to get an upgrade on his commander probably probably either that is probably um commander shield a le bubble shield thought i saw the strap bomber winging in nope there he is and gunship still massacring these riptides <laughs> strap bomber coming in aiming for the base or the ACU or something no actually I think that was a very confused circular pattern there we go now he's on the right target going to keep contacting the shields I don't know if there's something about the internal clock of regenerating shields during a power stall but it seems like ah was that a control K on those it seems like the um, it seems like the shields have been very conveniently recharging exactly when the strap bombers come by a lot all right commander shield is up what good it's do gonna do him I don't know and he is actually going to quit he's got nothing left all of his riptides are getting murdered. There's strat bombers over his ACU, and that is going to be game. All right, that is officially the craziest replay that anyone has sent me in the strategic facepalm category. Now, when I say the craziest, I'm talking about like on the fail side of things, not about crazy epic. But yeah, I thought this was hysterical, so <laughs> I was gonna share it with you guys. And as always, no personal offense is meant to the players in the game. Some of this stuff was really dang funny. So kudos to all you guys that played in it. Congrats to McNeil for being the last one standing after the stupidity went down. And hopefully um, everybody will learn a little something from this game and maybe be a little more communicative or uh, correct a couple things before the next time around. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna get a little bit more serious, but not much. We're gonna go jump over to a one versus one. I will be right back with that game. I will see you in a second. All right, we're back. And this time the map is Theta Passage. We're on a one versus one. And just so you know, this is a continuation of the Epic Fail series, but um, on a slightly more serious note, we can actually take a good lesson away from this game. I'm just going to let it play out. We'll see how it goes and you guys can deduce for yourselves what the lesson that you should learn is. But to introduce these guys, we've got Doom in the bottom left corner taking UEF and Ritsu going Cybran in the top right and pay no mind to the ladder rankings on here because you know not everybody plays ladder all the time and all of that kind of thing so the rankings in this are not actually incredibly accurate uh, these guys are relatively well matched against each other so 
We have the UEF player pushing first land with one power, two mechs, running forward to Hydro and laying down more land factories, pushing two mech marines up towards the center to snag any expansioneers that may rear their ugly heads in either the reclaim or the outside mass extractors. On the upper side, we have Reitsu as Cybran, skipping the first power generator, running forward and throwing down the Hydro as fast as his little engineering drones can place it. And he is going to throw down two... I'm saying throw down a lot. There's going to be a throw down this match. Currently, it is between the Mech Marine and Snoop and this Engineer, where the Manta is about to come try and intervene. Um, getting two land factories online and then going for air. And there's the stupid console button again. I swear I will have that fixed before I cast the next round. Um, ah, nice. Got a hunter down here too. So aggression on both sides and smooth escape right there. Smooth criminal nailing that engineer and then retracing his steps. We're going to see air on the northern side and not on the southern side because, as you can see, he has queued up no fewer than six land factories for a total of seven. So hopefully he can reclaim enough to make that worth his while. Otherwise, he is going to be horrifically mass all. And you can see how minimalistic his power is. Um, one thing that you have to remember in one versus one is that any extra power is a waste other than, you know, maybe plus 100 because you do want to have an overcharge available to you a little bit later in the game, but at the start, every single mass tick that you can put together is crucial. So building just barely enough power generators to run your land factories gives you that much more mass to push tanks, which can be the deciding factor in this battle. Now this ACU is headed up here, he's going to snag a little reclaim here on the manual side of things and then run towards the buildings, the hilarious thing being that the buildings really don't have any mass in them at all basically. They're very deceptive, there's far more mass in the rocks. There's a hero mantis over here plinking away at this tech one mass extractor, may get it, may not, not sure, there's tanks incoming but I think it actually will get it before the tank can kill it, yep. So plus one mantis. Wall's about to go down on this side, probably cued by, yes, by that engineer right up there. And Doom is going to suck up these buildings. Now I'm going to show you in just a second how little these buildings are worth. You can see the little tiny blip that happens when he reclaims one. Um, Doom, after getting the buildings, has 208 mass, which is basically nothing. And Reitsu, who did not get the buildings, has 467, over double. So... Definitely advantage to red and as far as eco goes they both have the same mass income and They're both stalled by about the same but Reitsu is Building he only has three land factories up and he's building some power to catch up because he is making air and He has more tanks because he built um, Actually it is all the reclaim because he did build roughly the same amount of factories one less factory alrighty mantis back in the base that is definitely not something that you want mantis intruding into your home plateau is not a good thing and here is where we start to get into the uh, um, how should I put this delicately your ACU is in the wrong place we have an ACU marching directly into the production of the enemy with fewer tanks to back him up than the enemy already has in his base. How you could possibly think this is a good idea is beyond me. Because there is no other way that this could turn out other than this ACU right here, which you can see calmly making its way northward. It is going to cut your ACU off. Then we have Jester! What? There is not even an air factory down here. Although, look at that. There is immediately one queued as soon as the Jester is spotted. This is the problem with being next to your opponent's production. The Jester has 100 yards to travel to get to your ACU. Your mobile anti-air has like 3 kilometers <laughs> to travel to save your ACU. 
and you had to build an air factory to get interceptors there. So Doom actually did make a pretty decent getaway. He's got tanks coming to back him up. He has the eco to win this. He made a clean slip past the ACU, and he's skirting like he's supposed to, but there's two jesters. Two jesters, and he has no air, and his ACU is way too far away from his production. Excellent maneuvering, placing his strikers in front of the ACU to try to slow the ACU down so that it's not able to gain on his ACU. He is still running. A third jester jumping into the mix, Raitsu chasing. Here comes the interceptor, finally straggling along, trying to save his poor commanding officer. But, you know, at this point, not really a whole lot that can be done. These three jesters still plugging away. There's now two interceptors. They are going to manage to shoot down one jester. And it's game, I think. 100 and kaboom detonation for doom all right that was a fail and that was a glorious unashamed fail but the lesson to be learned here is do not do not do not ever stick your acu directly into the enemy's production when you have an insufficient number of tanks to back you up. And now early game, I can kind of understand that, but five minutes into the game, you should have, it, it, you should wait till you get an air factory and get one scout, just one scout, just to see what the enemy has. That's all it takes and you cannot die. It, it, it's not that hard. Okay. And having said that, someone will probably pull a replay of me dying in the same situation because we all do stupid stuff, so whatever. I am doing that in full disclosure. Alrighty guys, that is going to wrap up the double feature for this cast segment. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Maybe that's enough fail to get you through the next week because uh, we're going to be back to the regular type of cast in the next session. But I'm, I hope y'all enjoyed it. I definitely did. I got major laughs out of these two casts. Alrighty, that is going to wrap it up for me for this game and this cast and this day, actually. So I will see you guys in the next one. Adios.